Introducing a completely redesigned experience that you can sense. And that senses you. The new Dell Latitude laptops bring your work closer to you. Exclusive video tonight, teen thieves with machetes rampaging across the southeast. Major exclusive, Only 9 News has leaked budget documents revealing tomorrow's big announcements. Egg shortage forcing supermarkets to limit how many you can buy. The simple key to avoiding July's internet price hike. The cheapest electric vehicles in the world coming to Queensland. Our special tribute to Gibbo, TV's King of the Kids. And Olympic places on the line as Australia's best swimmers hit the water in Brisbane. This is Nine News Queensland with Andrew Lofthouse and Melissa Downs. Good evening. A gang of six teenagers is running riot, terrorising parts of Logan and the Gold Coast for three straight nights. The machete-wielding group breaking into homes, stealing luxury cars and causing thousands of dollars in damage to a Daisy Hill business. And tonight, Only Nine News can bring you video of their rampage. A quick rev of the engine, then bang. The Ute packs a punch, but it takes not one, not two, but three rams in the stolen ram Ute to bust in. The doors of the Daisy Hill tobacconist smashed wide open. They rush in quickly, too quickly for one, seen tripping over and clutching his ankle, hobbling around before the group starts to load their bags, taking off with vapes and tobacco products before later dumping the ute. Police eventually located that, that vehicle in Kingston um, later on that morning and the vehicle was burnt out. We've been told up to six people may have been involved. We don't know the ages of them, um, but they appear to be teenagers. The youths have been wanted for days, with their rampage starting here in the early hours of Friday, captured on security cameras in Helensvale, one armed and dangerous wielding a machete. They stole this luxury BMW, posting and boasting online, then appearing to hit staggering speeds of almost 240 kilometres an hour. Their dangerous crime spree in multiple stolen cars, lasting the entire weekend. From about 1.30am till about 3am 3, 3 on, on Saturday, um, there were a number of attempted break-ins in, uh, in uh, Big Rewaters, Pacific Pines and Surface Paradise. And we're continually seeing um, the level of violence it is concerning for police. Live to Jacob Chico in the newsroom now. Jacob Police had the group in their sights this afternoon. They do. Melissa, police have been throwing a lot of resources at this investigation to try and catch these teenagers. That stolen BMW was being tracked by Polair this afternoon. It was seen in Rabina on the Gold Coast and then later in Marsden near Logan. We know police have this, this group of teenagers in their sights and we know as well they know exactly who they're looking for. So we understand arrests are imminent. Thanks, Jacob. Two exclusive breaking news out of Queensland Parliament now, where state political editor Tim Arvia joins us live. Tim, the state budget will be revealed tomorrow, but you've got leaked documents tonight. Yeah, that's right, Andrew. These papers make up the state budget, which will be handed down tomorrow, but we have the details here tonight. We can read you from there what is also has not been announced yet. We have heard many of the details already about the state budget, but now what Queenslanders have not been told is that there is going to be tomorrow the Queensland budget will be headlined by a record health spending health spending there will be 4.393 billion extra over four years this is going to increase the operating budget up to 26.71 billion for Queensland Health, an increase of 10.6%. The budget papers say this is to address ongoing demand and cost pressures. And that is needed because the budget papers also reveal some of the missed targets within Queensland Health, specifically elective surgery, the number of patients treated on time. The goal is to have 98%. They've achieved 86.8%. Ramping. The goal is to have 90% of patients off stretcher within 30 minutes. The budget papers say what was achieved was 59.7%. And emergency departments, where the aim is to have 80% of patients depart in less than four hours. The goal, 80%. 
that what they achieved was 60.7 per cent. So it is hoped that this funding will help alleviate some of that. There is also the cost of living measures. We've seen the $1,000 energy rebates that was brought forward into this year's budget. Also going forward, 50 cent train fares, as exclusively revealed by Nine News, there will be 20 per cent off car registration, $200 sport vouchers for children and first home buyer stamp duty concessions up to $800,000. But all this spending comes at a cost, and that is increased debt. These budget papers they will reveal that in the 24-25 year, where total debt had been forecast for Queensland to hit $122 billion, that's now been revised upwards by $2.7 billion, and tomorrow we'll be told the forecast debt for the 24-25 financial year will be $124.7 billion. Nevertheless, the Treasurer will be re uh, predicting a return to bu budget surplus after two years. Now, Andrew Melissa, there is plenty more in these budget papers, for example, and, uh, such as an, an extra $261 million to help fund youth workers at the new youth detention centre in Woodford. We are going to break it all down. We'll have all the important details about what's relevant to you in that state budget tomorrow. Look forward to it, Tim. Thank you. Desperate senior police and paramedics are calling on Queensland drivers to slow down as the state heads towards an unwanted record road toll. Two people have died in just the past few days, including a three-month-old baby. It's unrecognisable, a Toyota Hilux Trayback Ute, the latest in a series of crashes across the southeast. The passenger in this Ute was ejected. She and the driver are now fighting for life. And police say that driver was under the influence of drugs. Put it this way, the last week um, across the state has been a horror story on our roads. This scene less than 24 hours after this crash at Forest Lake. Two vehicles, both drivers 200 metres from home. Five people injured in total and they're all still in hospital. The fact that no one was killed in that crash is an absolute miracle. The engine block of this Mercedes ripped from its bolts. Police say it was doing in excess of 150 kilometres an hour. An engine block out of a car, it's not because you've got a very speedy mechanic. Obviously speed was involved in that. And a tragic update, a mother lost her life in this crash at Caboolture last week. And today, her three-month-old boy, who was in the car with mum, sadly lost his. It's absolutely tragic. A young woman and her very young child have lost their lives. Queensland's current road toll is sitting at 134 deaths, 15 more than this time last year. Senior officers used to warn drivers to slow down, but it's now become far more desperate. We're in a position where we are begging people literally begging them to put driving and the driving task at the top of your list when you get in that car. The medical director of the Queensland Ambulance yeah. Service agrees with police. Take your time, don't have, don't have a road traffic crash. We don't call them accidents, they are crashes. They're very avoidable. I've personally lost too many relatives and friends to car accidents. I want to see it stop. People need to slow down. People need to obey the road rules. People need to stop drink driving. Live now to Peter Fegan at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. Peter, you've got some exclusive details tonight on the investigation into that horrific crash at Forest Lake. I do, Andrew. Nine News can tonight reveal that police are now investigating whether or not drugs or alcohol played a part in that crash. They strongly suspect it did. Andrew, as for the driver, he is tonight behind me in hospital, suffering from multiple injuries, so police haven't been able to speak to him yet. They're hopeful that they can interview him tomorrow, get his version of events, but I am told, Andrew, that charges are extremely likely. As for the other four that were injured in this uh, horrific crash, they too are in hospital tonight around Brisbane. Melissa, they too are suffering from multiple injuries including burns. Melissa, all the result of a crash that police say one was avoidable, but also one of the worst they have seen in some time. Melissa? Thanks for the update, Peter. A Brisbane Christian college has expressed its regret more than two years after making national headlines over a distressing enrolment contract, forcing parents to sign off on their children's gender. Tonight, parents who took the fight to the Human Rights Commission are welcoming a resolution. Helen Clapham Burns was a teacher and a parent at City Point Christian College. I um, withdrew my son's enrolment and I resigned on the Monday and was heartbroken when this occurred. In 2022, the college released an enrolment letter. Among its contents, a stipulation the school could expel students on the basis of their sexual identity. The declaration included the statement that homosexuality was sinful and offensive to God. The contract was withdrawn after community backlash and the principal resigned. I'm a parent of a student who's a trans 
um, woman and there's no way I could sign a contract that, uh, that said that. Janina and Helen joined a group of parents who referred the school to the Queensland Human Rights Commission. Now, two years on, the college has reached a settlement with them and released a letter saying we regret any distress or concern which was caused and promising the school will be committed to continually reviewing policies and training. It's a clear signal that anti-gay and anti-trans rhetoric has no place in our schools. They need to be given the support they need without uprooting their schooling lives and battling for acceptance. While the groups involved have welcomed the steps that City Point College has taken, they now want the Queensland Government to take action to strengthen the state's anti-discrimination bill to protect teachers. Is there any update on the um, anti-discrimination um, changes in relation to City Point? Uh, no, not at this stage. Community feedback on a draft anti-discrimination bill is being reviewed. Anna Rawlings, Nine News. From sporting legends to musicians and medical professionals, more than 700 Australians have been included in this year's King's Birthday Honours list. Among those, 111 Queenslanders, each recognised for their significant contribution to their field. They come from all corners of the country, but have one thing in common their commitment to their cause. Glenn McGrath can now add an 08 to his list of accolades, 15 years since the first pink test for breast cancer, in memory of Jane. I think she'd be really proud to look around and see everyone supporting it. Legendary golfer Peter Senior also recognised for service to his sport. The Queenslander won 35 titles over his five-decade career, even winning some after the age of 50, before he retired in 2016. Hamish Blake has been thanked for making Australia laugh. Thank you. Brisbane-based John Collins, Powderfingers bass guitarist, honoured for his work and service to the music industry. Also from Brisbane, Serena Russo, synonymous with this famous tune. How to get that shot. Recognised for her significant contribution to business, vocational education and training. She says she hopes her recognition can help inspire others. Believe in yourself, never give up on your dreams and always believe that you too can go out there and tap your full potential. Some former politicians also cracked the list. COVID-era premiers Mark McGowan and Daniel Andrews recognised for their dedication to their states and to public health. Beside the big names are some you may not recognise, but they are no less important. Toowoomba's Colleen Taylor recognised for her service to public administration. She blew the whistle on the robo-debt scandal. It's a cliche, but I am definitely humbled by it. She hopes it empowers people to tell the truth. I think it's important to well, recognise the horrors that were robo-debt and the obscenity of it. 90-year-old Dr Laurie Upfold also listed. I was flabbergasted. He helped pioneer hearing tests for infants and later worked on the rollout of a new invention, the hearing aid. I didn't believe that it would do the job it was supposed to do, but it did. Edward Monet was recognised for almost 15 years of voluntary work using rugby league to help connect Indigenous communities in Queensland. It's not about the accolade of what I do. What's more important is that I'm creating an opportunity and a pathways for the future generation of Queenslanders. Former Wallaby Richard Marks made the list too. The Brisbane man recognised for his contribution to rugby union and keen to see it back to the top. We've still got the talent. Uh, we just have to work on it a little bit harder and we'll get back up there. Others have already been up there. 75-year-old Ruth Wilson. I'm feeling fantastic. Floated over the Swiss Alps in a hydrogen balloon. I was standing leaning over the wicker basket trying to see the snow-covered tips of the Swiss Alps in the dark and thinking, what am I doing here? Each of these Australians comes from a different walk of life, but they've all given us something to inspire us, to cheer for and to delight in for generations to come. There's a lot more work to be done. Um, there's a lot more work that we need to do as a, as a, as a people and as a state. I'm sure that uh, you know, the future does hold a lot of optimism for us. Pat Heaney, Nine News. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces mounting pressure tonight after a key member of his war cabinet quit and called for an election date. Minister Benny Gantz announcing his resignation while accusing the leader of mismanaging the war. We are going to go for elections and at the end of it we'll have a government that will have the confidence of the people. Meanwhile, Israel has defended yesterday's hostage rescue operation as the death toll climbed to 274 Palestinians, including 64 children. 
Well, it's all eyes on the Brisbane Aquatic Centre tonight as the best swimmers in the country go head-to-head -head in the hopes of qualifying for Paris. Jonathan Upton is there for us tonight at uh, Chandler. Uh, Jono, these are the stars of our Olympic team. Lofty, yes, and there are so many Queenslanders among them. Great friends are training, but tonight, right through to Saturday, this is serious business. A competition deciding who gets an Olympic ticket and who doesn't. Among the big names, Brisbane's world record holder, Ariane Titmus, who fired a real warning shot to the world in the first heat of the day. Olympics reporter Damien Ryan begins our coverage. The Australian swim trials are underway. And an Olympic Games beckons. Event one, the heats of the 400 metres freestyle. And the defending champion on a mission. And Ariane Tippmann certainly isn't cruising through the heat. She's almost half a second in front of world record time. But Arnie took a foot off the pedal. I tried to set up the first three laps of my race um, and then... Yeah, I switched off. The first day of racing, and you understand why Australia is regarded as a superpower in world swimming. Five events, four Olympic champions and two former world champions, all in action. 22-year-old Kaylee McEwen rules the pool in backstroke. She's eager to add the 200 individual medley to her resume. And the big names will just keep on coming here. Emma McKeon, Australia's most successful swimmer, fastest qualifier in the 100 metres butterfly. It's a great, great swim. And looking Paris bound, Zach Stubbledy Cook arrived in Brisbane as the Olympic champion in the 200 metres breaststroke. But a 26-year-old from Melbourne, Samuel Williamson, announced himself in the 100. That is a crack. Wow. I'm 58.95. They're pretty stoked. Not bad for the morning. <laughs> Blow the cobwebs out. Keep them honest and just, yeah, just see what I can do, really. In the 400 metres freestyle, the favourites, Elijah Winnington. Very, very strong heat swim. And Sam Short will battle it out in tonight's final. He may be a former world champion, but Sam concedes here... He's just another face in the crowd. That's amazing. I mean, you walk around pool deck and you see legends everywhere you look. In Brisbane, Damien Ryan, Nine News. So now it's sudden death. First or second should book you a place on the flight. One of the key finals tonight, Ariane Tipmas pet event, the 400 metres freestyle. She's obviously thrived during the St Peter's Western camp that took place up in Cairns. Her time in the heat today suggesting we might see something special tonight. So we'll see some jubilation. We'll also see heartbreak for those who miss out, of course. And look, we have six days of it. I'll be back later for sport, including a full preview of night one with another Queensland swimming great, former Olympic gold medalist, Gian Rooney. Lofty. Great week ahead. Thanks, John. I can't wait. The egg supply scramble. Why supermarkets are now limiting how many cartons you can buy. A tourist's wild rampage in Bali, accused of stealing a truck and crashing through a toll gate. A man blows up his home. See the explosive new video. Plus, internet prices about to rise. At the end of sport, the simple step that can land you big savings. Shoppers are being urged not to panic buy eggs, with shortages now affecting two supermarket chains. Triggered by an avian flu outbreak at five Victorian farms, there's a warning tonight that supply shortfalls could last more than six months. The shelves that usually stock plenty of eggs at these Audi supermarkets were bare this afternoon. And Coles has imposed a purchase limit of two cartons per customer in response to the supply shortage triggered by the detection of bird flu across five Victorian farms. It's also stressful for the whole industry because we're all on edge at the moment. It's estimated around 700,000 chickens will be destroyed to stem the avian influenza outbreak. This could reduce fresh stock nationally by up to half a million eggs a day. Veteran egg farmer Brian Ahmed says in addition to the poultry cull, egg production naturally slows in winter. What you've got to remember is these aren't uh, machines. We can't switch them on and off. Supply issues could last six months or more. Of course, if there's a big demand and less supply, then the price of eggs will go up. Shoppers are being urged to use common sense in relation to purchase limits. I would certainly encourage everyone to be respectful when they're shopping, uh, but the very quick action that Victoria has taken, backed by the Commonwealth, has meant that this outbreak has not spread further afield. Amid the current bird flu outbreak, farmers want to assure the community that while eggs may be in shorter supply than usual, they are totally safe to eat. The supermarkets aren't the only ones that sell eggs. Look around. Emily Rice, Nine News.
New footage has been released of a home exploding in the United States. The home in Virginia blew up back in December with police on its doorstep. Today, multiple angles of the blast were made public, as well as the cause. Authorities say a man filled his basement with petrol and intentionally set it alight with a flare. He didn't survive. Tens of thousands of electric cars as far as the eye can see, and they're headed our way. The China-US trade fight is a big win for Queensland drivers, with new EV models flooding the market, and they're cheaper than ever. Your guide to the best brands, that is coming up. A tragic end to the search for Michael Mosley, how a cameraman made the sad discovery, plus the TV doctor's widow shares a touching tribute. An urgent warning for parents and grandparents how social media is shrinking children's brains. And a new campaign to protect Queensland teens from the dangers of vaping. TikTok is tonight being used to try and persuade millions of Australians to give up smoking and vaping for good. Our first anti-smoking campaign in more than a decade is taking a new approach. Instead of using the threat of cancer, it's warning about the social harm smoking has on your life. They're scenes from the suburbs stopping our society going up in smoke. Vaping addiction can creep up on you. And before you know it, it can be hard to resist its pull. Nearly $64 million will be spent on the campaign across television, radio, gaming and social media, targeting more than 3 million Australians who vape or smoke. Vaping. Are you really choosing anymore? It is simply not responsible for government to continue to vacate an area where young Australians are getting so much of their information. Two sets of vaping laws are already through the parliament. Tonight, the government confident they have the support for a third package targeting sales, supply, manufacturing and possession of non-therapeutic vapes. The Nationals want regulation over condemnation. The prescription model hasn't worked. I signed up to that. Uh, when I was in government and I got it wrong. The kind of regulation that the Nationals are pushing is an absolute joke and it's totally discredited. Schools have become a surprise frontline in this battle against vapes, teachers and parents say policing the problem can be difficult. But we started buying our own and doing it in private. Or was it in secret? The new commercials target kids, but lawmakers and health officials are realistic about the size of the fight ahead. It's distressing to report that we have received calls to our quit line from children as young as 12. We have this new public health menace of vaping, which is so deliberately and cynically targeted by Big Tobacco at hooking a new generation onto nicotine addiction. And the tragedy is it's working. Charles Croucher, Nine News. A 50-year-old British man is accused of stealing a truck and going on a rampage through Bali, smashing cars, crashing through a toll booth and winding up at the International Airport. It's alleged Damon Hills assaulted the owner of the vehicle before getting behind the wheel and travelling to the departure terminal. He was arrested by airport security officers. Australian researchers are tonight saying if children spend too much time on social media, parts of their brain could shrink. Researchers at Macquarie University have found prolonged use has a negative effect on the prefrontal cortex and frontal lobes, affecting abstract thinking and managing emotions. Scientists say this could increase the chance of cognitive decline later in life. Dr Michael Mosley's wife has described her husband as wonderful, funny, kind and brilliant after his body was found on a Greek island after a five-day search. Local media made the find only metres from a beach bar packed with holidaymakers. The question tonight, how did he end up there? On the fifth day of searching, a devastating discovery. The body of doctor and TV presenter Michael Mosley. <laughs> found on a steep, rocky slope just above a beach on the Greek island of Simi. The 67-year-old was reported missing last Wednesday. This is what we now know about his final movements. Michael Mosley left his wife on St Nicholas Beach at 1.30 in the afternoon, walking to the village of Petty, where he's first captured on CCTV around 1.50. Ten minutes later, he passes through Petty Marina. He should have taken an inland path to his accommodation, but he heads in the wrong direction, up a mountain track, in scorching heat. That terrain is so treacherous, a police officer broke his leg navigating it. It's believed Michael eventually collapsed. His body was found just 80 metres from the Aegea Marina Beach Resort. Ultimately, it was a television cameraman who spotted it through a long lens. 
We took a photo of the screen with an iPhone. We zoomed it in, and you can clearly see there is a man lying down. Really sad. As I said, I wish we had better news for the family. From his wife, Dr. Claire Bailey, a heartbreaking message. It's devastating to have lost Michael, my wonderful, funny, kind and brilliant husband. Michael was an adventurous man. It's part of what made him so special. Born in India but raised and educated in Britain, Dr Mosley began his television career as a producer in the 1980s. He eventually took his talents in front of the camera and into living rooms all around the world. Today, tributes for the man behind the famous 5-2 fasting diet. From Jamie Oliver, absolutely devastating news. What a wonderfully sweet, kind and gentle man. One of Dr Mosley's final projects, working with Australians to improve our sleep. He had a great sense of humour, he was down to earth, exactly how he appears on camera. He's very much going to be missed uh, by not just my team, but everyone who interacted with him or read one of his books or watched one of his programmes. Work that changed lives, now his legacy. In London, Edward Godfrey, Nine News. Brisbane's king of kids TV passes away at the age of 69. Tonight we pay special tribute to Michael Gibbo Gibson. Car makers flooding Queensland with cheap EVs, your guide to the best new brands. And the hero pilots who managed to land through broken glass. Checking petrol prices now, and the average for unleaded in Brisbane is $1.98. Diesel is $1.95. The average on the Gold Coast for unleaded is $1.87. The latest advice from RACQ, unleaded prices are increasing, so don't delay and fill the tank at stations charging $1.79 per litre or less. Queensland has lost a comedy legend with the passing of Michael Gibson, or Gibbo, as he was affectionately known. Tonight we remember his comic contribution to local television and morning radio as his colleagues praise his warmth and generosity. If you ever ask Michael Gibbo Gibson where his effortless humour came from, he'd quip, it was all in his funny bones. He would do what was ever necessary to uh, entertain and make people laugh. Affectionately known as Gibbo, larger than life, full of surprises. Extremely talented, wonderful man. Gibbo's career started here in the Channel 9 studios as a director in 1977. But his clever wit was evident from the get-go and by the early 80s he'd moved from behind to in front of the camera, hosting a number of children's programs, most notably the Channel Niners. Seven o'clock here on Channel 9, you'll love it! He had an element of clever rat bagginess to him that, that really sort of, I think, connected with people. David Napier worked with Gibbo on the show and will never forget his brilliance. Everything was clever, everything was off the cuff. Gibbo left the Nine Network in 1986 and continued carving out a stellar comedy career on shows like Agro's Cartoon Connection. In the 90s, he was one of the comedy maestros behind the top-rating B105 breakfast radio program, working with Jamie Dunn, Ian Skippen and Robin Bailey. He just made you laugh. The way he looked, you know, that big beard and, and the way he didn't really care about what he wore. He just was this wonderful person. King of the kids on and off the telly. Everyone had a good time! <laughs> Not just a funny man, but a devoted father of two and loving husband to wife Carol. Gibbo was diagnosed with dementia 18 months ago. He'd been in a nursing home. He died in hospital on Sunday night following complications. He was 69. His legacy will be always enjoy what you do, laugh at everything and, you know, make the most of it. Bruce Page, Nine News. Well, no nose and a shattered cockpit windshield. This Austrian Airlines Airbus A320 has copped a battering. It was trying to land at Vienna Airport when it flew through a storm cloud and was pummeled rather by large hailstones. The aircraft was badly damaged, but no passengers were injured. A Maroons Enforcer set to spend extended time on the sideline. That's coming up in sport. Plus, we're back live to the Olympic swimming trials. Will our Golden Girls book their ticket to Paris? At the end of sport, internet price hike warning. Plus, the simple step to help you save big on your bills.
And what a great start to the week. The cool mornings and mild sunny days are set to continue. Perfectly clear in the city this evening. It's currently 17 degrees. Your full forecast not far away. Intuitive, capable, and above all, intelligent. The Ford Escape is fearlessly designed and makes every day effortless. Good evening again, live from the pool deck at Chandler. Olympic gold medalist Gian Rooney is alongside me. Gian, now Ariane Timmer, she was uh, fantastic in the 400 free heats today. <laughs> Can we expect something special tonight? I actually really think we can. She looked sensational this morning. She was actually under world record pace for the first 150 metres and then just cruised for the next part of the race knowing that her job was done. The amazing thing here is I think if Arnie wants to break her world record tonight, she can do it. It just decides if she wants to send a message or not to the rest of the world. Now, for the men, we've got two world champions going at it in the 400 free for the guys. Yep, that's right. We've got Sam Short, who is last year's world champion in this event, and then Elijah Winnington, the 2022 world champion in this event. So they will go head-to-head. -head. They will be 1-2. It just depends on which order. Elijah looked much cruisier this morning. However, we know Sam Short's got a very long distance week ahead of him. But remember, we've got so many Olympic gold medalists in the pool tonight. We've We've got Emma McKeon, Kaylee McEwen, Zach Stubbity Cook, and we've got Brendan Hall, who is vying to make his fifth Paralympic team. So it's just exciting across the board. So much to look forward to. I know you have commentary duties. We'll let you go. Enjoy night one of six. Thank you Good so luck. much. Thank you. Gian Rooney. Let's go to the rest of the day's sport now. And let's go straight to Ben Dobbin in the newsroom. Dobbo, you have details on the future of Dolphins hard man Tom Flegler tonight. Yeah, good evening, John. I certainly do. Now, there has been some talk in the last 24 hours that Thomas Flegler's career at the Dolphins would be over due to the nerve injury of his shoulder. That is fundamentally incorrect. Flegler sustained an injury on, in round five against the West Tigers. Now, it hasn't rehabbed to what they believed it was going to be, and looks, it looks like that Flegler will miss the remainder of the season. But his career is far from over. He'll be briefing surgeons in the coming days, and the rehab will begin. But, look, it's not great. Great news for the Dolphins in the year 2024, but expect him back next season playing for the Dolphins. Jono? Thanks very much, Ben. Well, the Dolphins' newest signing drew the media to Redcliffe today. Problem was, Tevita Pangai Jr. was a no-show for his first day of training. The former Broncos and Bulldogs enforcer telling the club he's sick. No news understands. He also recently retired boxer, rather, is managing a slight hamstring strain. It's awesome. I'm, I'm excited to have him. He's a, he's a wrecking boy and um, it'll be, be good to, to get him out on the field with us. The Bulldogs have pulled off a King's birthday stunner against the Eels. Blake Wilson's second try of the match in the final five minutes, sealing the 22-18 win. That pushes the Broncos down to eighth, souring the victory though. Kurt Mansin been for a blatant crusher tackle and Jacob Preston suffering a suspected broken ankle. An unlikely Queensland combination is on the cusp of creating Olympic history. Tara Mawana Jr. heads to Paris, determined to win Australia's first ever gold medal in boxing. Thanks to some life-changing advice from his coach, who's altering perceptions in the male-dominated sport. Standing a touch under two metres, tall Tara Mawana Jr. possesses explosive power. But there's one Queenslander always keeping him in line. I feel like she's getting the best out of me and... The results are showing. Trainer Shara Roma sees a personality that belies his towering physique. Contradiction. Yeah. He's a beast in the ring, but he is a gentle giant. They've overhauled the super heavyweight's diet, shedding 15 kilograms to be in the best shape of his life. I would prefer to eat, you know, two more burgers or a couple more steaks, but um, instead of eating for pleasure, we eat for fuel. Tiramawana's Olympic dream was sparked six years ago following the death of his grandfather. I know he'll be very proud. Him and my grandmother will be very proud. No one's accomplished this achievement yet in our family. Winning an Olympic warm-up event in the US reinforced his medal potential for Paris, where he'll have Shara by his side as Australia's first ever female boxing coach at an Olympics. I hope by pathing away that the females can look up and say, hey, I, I want to go that same direction. Australia has never won Olympic gold in boxing, but this Brisbane duo is used to defying the norm. I know 100% I'm going to win a medal. It's just what colour is the medal? Probably gold. <laughs> Adam Jackson, Nine News.
He was dubbed the next Rafael Nadal. Now Carlos Alcaraz has the clay title to prove it, defeating Alexander Zverev to win his first French Open title. The 21-year-old Spaniard fought back from a set down to claim victory in a four-hour marathon, becoming the youngest man in history to win a Grand Slam on all three surfaces. But it was already. It was a wet and wild day out for Formula One drivers at the Canadian Grand Prix. Oscar Piastri almost bumped off the track but he held his nerve to finish fifth, while Daniel Ricciardo clawed his way back from 14th to claim eighth. At the front of the field, Max Verstappen, the three-time world champion, winning his 50th race in the last 75 starts. Lofty Melissa, well, the swimmers, they're out there doing their warm-ups. It's going to be a wonderful night here at the pool. Live coverage on 9, 7.30. Sounds great. Thanks, Jono. Queenslanders are already bearing the brunt of increased power, private health and grocery costs and there's more bill pain on the way. Internet prices are about to rise as part of the NBN's upgraded technology, but there's a simple step that can land you big savings. Running an online business, there's one thing Naomi Dorland and her family would struggle to live without. I work from home, my twins are at high school, um, so everything's very heavily reliant on the internet. But like many, she's facing internet price hikes come July 1. NBN Co increasing their wholesale costs, which will be passed on to consumers through internet providers. People may start to pay an extra 4 to $6 a month. Over a year, that adds up to you know close to $100, and it's going to hurt Australians at the hip pocket when we're being hit in every direction. Compare the Market says the first thing customers should do is check your bills. These days, most plans have large or unlimited data allowances, but it's the difference in speed you're paying for. You may find that you're not using as much internet as you were in the past so you may want to move to a cheaper plan. For example you only need a basic speed if you work or study from home and stream videos in standard definition. A premium speed is for larger households who stream in high definition and have hobbies like online gaming. The difference between the two can be as much as $25 a month. There's a number of ways that you can cut costs. Uh, there are honeymoon deals so a lot of providers want your business and it's a very competitive market right now. While some perks expire after a set time, it's worth checking out current deals. Compare the Market says some incentives include Telstra offering two months binge and four months Spotify premium and Optus including a Netflix standard subscription. Commonwealth Bank customers who are in their yellow program can get between 30 and 40 percent off more internet plans while there's savings of up to $15 a month if you bundle internet with electricity and gas plans with Origin, Dodo and Sumo. As long as they can offer us a stable reliable connection and hopefully for a cheaper price then we'll easily switch. Kate Lamb, Nine News. In just three minutes, tens of thousands of electric cars headed our way. Chinese car makers are flooding Queensland with cheap EVs. Tonight your guide to the new models and the best brands. That's just moments away. In the meantime, Gary's back with a check on the weather. Gaz, it felt like a pretty cold start to Monday. It certainly was, Andrew, uh, especially inland, a little bit of a frosty start. There were some sub-zero temperatures, but here in the city is suddenly just starting to kick in. It feels like temperature down to 15 degrees. Your forecast up next. Classic Australian-made vehicles like Fords and Holdens are being replaced by a wave of little-known Chinese car makers. More than half a dozen manufacturers have announced plans to sell electric vehicles in Australia in the past month, and they'll be cheaper here than almost anywhere else in the world. A sea of electric cars all coming from one place. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese electric cars are now being bought each year in Australia and the dam has burst. Many more are on the way. In the last month, seven new Chinese car makers have announced they're on the way. Within the year, you'll see cars with these badges on Australian roads. And it's not just Chinese brands, it's global brands building cars in China. The battle is over. China is now the world's electric car powerhouse. Year to date in 2024, over 80% of all electric vehicles sold in Australia were made in China. And for political reasons, we're getting them cheaper than other countries. The death of the Australian car manufacturing industry has opened the door to the booming Chinese market. And Drive Director James Ward says that means value for buyers. These cars are produced at such low costs and at high scale that the European and the US manufacturers can't actually compete like for like. So those governments are imposing tariffs on the importation of cars to protect their industry. We don't have an industry to protect. So 
the gates are open at the moment and Australian buyers are the ones who benefit. This BYD seal is a good example. It's selling in Australia for about $50,000. But if you were to buy it in Europe, you'd be spending more like $90,000 equivalent. Well, frankly, that's a really, really good story for Australian buyers. We are taking advantage of the value that's being represented in these cars. Chris Kohler, Nine News. Switch on a Dakin Alira X split system with advanced streamer technology to remove more than 99% of harmful indoor air pollutants and surround yourself with cleaner air this summer. Dakin, perfecting the air. Well, Gary Young Bree's back with your full weather forecast now. Gaz, the city's looking good in green and gold tonight. Oh, it certainly is, Melissa. How good is that? The Story Bridge lit in green and gold. There'll be multiple landmarks uh, around the city this week lit up in green and gold. Of course, it's all part of the Australian swimming trials that kicked off right here in Brizzy today as we count down to the Paris Olympics. But you can catch all the action live and free on 9 and again we'll hit the pool from 7.30 this evening. Now, how good is winter in South East Queensland? Talking of swimming, if you want to jump in the ocean, it is pristine at the moment, clean and still 22 and a half degrees. Now, it's a little bit warmer than what tomorrow morning's temperature will be. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's have a look at temps recorded across southeast Queensland over the past 24 hours. And a bit frosty inland this morning. We had lows of minus one recorded in Warwick and Oakey. Uh, we had two degrees in Ipswich this morning, 11 here in the city. Daytime temperatures were slightly up on average, 23 in Brisbane, 24 the top in Ipswich, 22 for Coolangatta and the Goldie, 23 Redcliffe, the Sunshine Coast, to Woomba 17. The weather map, strong wind, shower and rain gradually easing over South Australia, southern New South Wales, Victoria and Tassie. With a passing cold front, there'll be welcome snow for the ski fields. They should see about 20 centimetres in the next 24 hours and maybe another 10 into Wednesday. They certainly need it. For the capitals, showers in Perth and Adelaide, windy and wet for Melbourne and Hobart tomorrow, frosty morning for Canberra, early cloud in Darwin, clearing to a top of 28 degrees. Now, Queensland tomorrow, sunny and dry across the entire state after a cool morning, some early fog and frost patches inland for Rome. Now, Cairns, Townsville, Mount Isa and Longreach expecting high 20s. Mackay only low 20s. The Capricornia, Wide Bay and Burnett in the mid-20s. But beautiful blue skies for Tuesday. Here in the southeast, some early fog around the Lockyer Valley, followed by a sunny day. Light winds right across the southeast. Overnight temperatures ranging between sort of 4 and 10 degrees, while daytime highs, well, we're looking at low 20s, up to about 23 for Burnett, Bow Desert, Gatton and Ipswich. Morton Bay, south south to east, 10 to 15 knots at first, easing in the the middle of the day. Brisbane, sunny, light winds, a low of 10 and a top of 23. Your seven day outlook, sunny and warm Wednesday, 24, the pick of the week. Sunny Thursday and only 21. Mostly sunny and low 20s Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Ipswich, warm on Wednesday up to 25, then back to low 20s for the rest of the week. Sunday should see up around 23 degrees again, but some chilly mornings for the Goldie. Wednesday, the pick of the week, 24 degrees. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, tops of 21. Sunday, sunny and 22. Sunshine Coast, sunny Wednesday, 24 mostly sunny for the rest of the week, light winds and low 20s, Sunday back up to around 22 degrees. So looking good for the rest of the week, just a little bit fresh in the mornings, but how good is that story bridge this evening? It is a pretty good picture. The week looks good too. Thanks, Gary. And before we go, here's a look at a story you won't want to miss on Nine News tomorrow night. This winter is going to be a long, cold and hard winter for many households. But there is help. Thank you so much for calling me. This team on the front line wants to give you power bill relief. If you don't call, you won't get the assistance you need. Find out what you're entitled to. Nine News, your news, tomorrow. And that is Nine News Queensland for this evening. Ali Langdon is next with The Current Affair. From all of us, good night. Good night.